Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we'll be taking a look at the Zen 3 IPC claims made by AMD during their announcement of the Ryzen 5000 series. Now, of course, I've already benchmarked these CPUs. I'm sure you guys have seen the various reviews that we've put online, and I have found the performance uplift to be quite substantial. Therefore, I don't doubt AMD's claims, but I'm still interested to take a look, especially as it will give us a chance to compare Zen 3's IPC with Intel's 10th Gen Core series, so Comet Lake, as well as take a look at AMD's progress with Ryzen over the past three years. And this is something we've done quite a bit of in the past. For example, shortly after the release of Zen 2, we investigated AMD's claim of a 15% IPC improvement and found in that case they weren't exaggerating the performance improvements. With core count and clock speeds at parity, the 3800X provided an 18% improvement over the 2700X in Cinebench's multi-core test. Then we saw a 13% improvement in the V-Ray and Corona benchmarks, while gaming performance was improved by 13% as well. This is particularly impressive given the baby steps that we've seen Intel make over the past six, seven, eight generations. So a 15% jump from Zen Plus to Zen 2 was massive, and with Zen 3 we really were hoping to see more double digit gains. But I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting AMD to pull out as much as they have. They've attributed these gains to cache prefetching, execution engine, branch predictor, micro OP cache, front end and load slash store improvements. Now, AMD used a wide range of applications and games to arrive at the 19% claim over Zen 2, using eight core processors operating at a fixed four gigahertz clock speed. And this is exactly how I've tested for IPC gains in the past, so I'll stick with that method. For the memory, all test configurations used four 8GB DDR4-3200CL14 memory modules, and the correct timings were ensured for all platforms. All CPUs were cooled using the Corsair IQ H150i Elite Capelix AIO, and for all the testing the GeForce RTX 3090 was used. Finally, all this data is fresh, there's no results carried over from previous tests, so it's as updated as it can possibly be. Right then, let's get into the graphs. All right, so as usual, we'll start with Cinebench R20, and here we find an 11% IPC improvement for the 5800X over the 3800X, so that's Zen 3 versus Zen 2. Not quite 19%, but remember that was the average, so presumably we will find much bigger performance gains elsewhere. Before we move on though, it's incredible to see that in just three years, AMD's achieved a 35% performance uplift in this test from the original Zen architecture. It's also pretty crazy to see them now leading Intel by a whopping 27% margin, so almost 30% faster than Intel when matched at the same clock frequency. And the single core performance is much of the same. Zen 3 is 11% faster than Zen 2 and 24% faster than Intel's 10th Gen core series. Moving on to the 7-zip compression performance, we find an 18% performance uplift for the 5800X over the 3800X, and that meant it was 24% faster than the 10700K. We're also looking at a completely insane 58% IPC improvement from Zen to Zen 3. The improvements for the decompression test are a little less impressive. That said, we're still talking about double digit gains here as Zen 3 was 11% faster than Zen 2. It also left the 10700K well behind, beating it by a 35% margin. AMD's SMT technology is far more powerful than Intel's and that's what we're seeing here. I found in my Ryzen 5000 series reviews that the performance gains in Blender were very small, and here we're seeing why. Just a 5% IPC improvement in this test when comparing the 5800X to the 3800X. Even so, Zen 3 was still 16% faster than Intel's Comet Lake architecture when matched clock for clock. Despite the weak gains just seen in Blender, we did find substantial performance improvements in the V-Ray benchmark. Here the 5800X is 16% faster than the 3800X and 26% faster than the 10700K. We're also seeing a 35% improvement over the original Zen architecture. The improvements seen in the Corona benchmark are also very strong. Here the 5800X was 15% faster than the 3800X and 17% faster than the 10700K. Then when compared to the 1800X, so the original Zen architecture, we're looking at a 34% IPC improvement. Like Blender, the gains seen in DaVinci Resolve Studio 16 are much lower than most other applications. We're talking about just a 7% IPC improvement when compared to the previous generation, though that was still a 12% boost over Intel's latest generation. Premiere Pro is another video editing application that doesn't show particularly strong IPC gains for Zen 3. This time just a 6% improvement over Zen 2 is seen. Still, the 5800X was 14% faster than the 10700K, and that's a reasonably large performance uplift at the same clock speed. 
The massively improved single core performance for latency sensitive workloads can be seen when testing with Photoshop. Here the 5800X was 21% faster than the 3800X and quite shockingly still 18% faster than the 10700K. So we really are looking at a new breed of CPU here. We also find a similar situation when testing with After Effects, though the Zen 3 over Zen 2 gains aren't quite as large, this time offering a 16% performance uplift. That said, versus Intel, AMD does make out better here, beating the 10700K by a 23% margin. Now before we move on to the gaming benchmarks, here's a quick look at total system power usage. Although we only saw a 5% IPC improvement in Blender for Zen 3 over Zen 2, it's important to note that this performance improvement came with a slight power saving as system usage dropped by 3%. And given that both architectures use the same TSMC 7 nanometer process, that's an extremely impressive result. Even more impressive is the fact that the 5800X was 16% faster than the 10700K in this test, and here we're seeing that it used 15% less power when measuring total system power usage. Intel really is getting destroyed now in terms of performance per watt. Okay, time for the all important game benchmarks, starting with Far Cry New Dawn, and here we're looking at a 13% IPC uplift for the 5800X over the 3800X, and a 33% increase over first gen Ryzen. When compared to Intel, AMD appears to be at parity, at least in Far Cry New Dawn, a title where they have struggled in the past. The IPC improvements in Rainbow Six Siege are far more impressive. Here the 5800X was 24% faster than the 3800X when matched at the same clock speed. We're also seeing a 9% improvement over Intel's Comet Lake architecture and an incredible 54% improvement over Zen, the first generation Ryzen architecture. Watch Dogs Legion shows an 18% IPC improvement for Zen 3 over Zen 2, and that's almost a 40% increase over Zen, while AMD's latest architecture also beat Intel's Comet Lake architecture by an 8% margin. So some great gains there for Zen 3 in Watch Dogs. Moving on to F1 2020, and here we see that the 5800X is 6% faster than the 10700K. So once again, clock for clock, AMD is comfortably beating Intel in games. That's a 21% gen on gen IPC improvement for AMD, and a 45% improvement since first introducing Ryzen 3 years ago. AMD managed to narrowly beat Intel in the Horizon Zero Dawn benchmark, offering 3% greater IPC performance, and that's a 16% improvement over Zen 2. We're also looking at a 33% improvement over the original Zen architecture. As seen in our Ryzen 5000 product reviews, the Zen 3 architecture works extremely well in Death Stranding, and here we're seeing a 29% increase in IPC with the 5800X over the 3800X. But just as impressive was the 10% margin the 5800X enjoyed over the 10700K. We're also looking at solid performance gains in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This time the 5800X was 24% faster than the 3800X and 9% faster than the 10700K. We're also looking at an almost 50% improvement over first gen Ryzen. Finally, we have Hitman 2, and here the 5800X was 23% faster than the 3800X, another massive performance uplift that's entirely down to architectural improvements. The 5800X also managed to edge out the 10700K, winning by a 5% margin, and that means when matched at the same clock speed, AMD didn't lose in a single one of these gaming benchmarks. Now, if we average the 8-game data that we just looked at, we find that on average the 5800X enjoyed a 22% IPC uplift over the 3800X and a 7% increase over the 10700K. We're also seeing a 44% improvement from Zen and 40% from Zen Plus. So once again, some truly impressive gains for Ryzen over the years. Now before we wrap up the testing, here's a quick look at cache and memory latency performance using a full random access pattern. The 5800X sees a 37% reduction in cache and memory latency when compared to the 3800X, which actually means it's 60% faster here. We're also looking at an 8% improvement when compared to the Intel Core i7-10700K, so the Comet Lake architecture. Another big improvement has been made to core-to-core -core communication. Here the small 7 nanometer Zen 3 core complex die featuring a single 8-core CCX blows the much larger 10700K die out of the water, reducing core latency by as much as 44%. We're also talking about a 45% improvement from the 3800X, which features two CCXs, each with four cores in a single CCD. Then when compared to first gen Ryzen, we see that core latency has been reduced by 66%. 
AMD's clearly made another big step forward with Zen 3. On average in games, we're looking at a 22% IPC improvement, and in applications, a more modest 12% improvement. Depending on the application, we saw performance gains as high as 21%, seen in Photoshop, but we also saw gains as little as 5% seen in Blender. And as I said, across the nine individual applications benchmarked, we saw a 12% gain on average. Adding all our application and gaming data together, we find that on average, Zen 3 provided a 16% IPC improvement. So that's not miles away from AMD's claimed 19% improvement. And admittedly, they were using more applications and games and they were obviously, because of that, there were other applications and games that probably scaled a little bit better. Sort of like what we see with Death Stranding, for example. And we did see greater than 19% gains on average in games, which is really where Ryzen has traditionally lagged behind. When compared to the Core i7-10700K, we saw that in the gaming benchmarks, Zen 3 was 7% faster on average, and in the applications, we're looking at a 21% IPC improvement on average, and that's not even taking into account the huge improvements in power efficiency. Intel really has their work cut out for them at this point, especially given AMD is aggressively pushing for further gains with Zen 4. Anyway, that is going to do it for our look at Zen 3's IPC improvements. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. You can also subscribe for more content. And if you'd like a lot more content and some other really cool perks, then check out our Patreon and or Floatplane account. Link for that stuff is in the video description. They will give you access to stuff like live streams. We do those at least once a month. So we talk about all the goings on. We address your questions live. So if there's something you want to ask Tim or myself, you can just pop that in the uh, live chat feed and we'll get to that. We also have a Discord chat where you can also ask us questions there. Tim and I are quite active on the Discord channel. We have a lot of awesome members, part of the Harbour Box community. Behind the scenes videos, we do them from time to time, Q and A's. Anyway, if you're interested, links for all that stuff, as I said, is in the video description. If not, that is also perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>